Hello everyone. <clears throat> In this segment, we're going to look at three wonderful pieces of pottery that, I know it's funny how these things happen, I, they, I got them all within a few days of, of each other and they relate so closely. All three are from Santo Domingo, Pueblo, dating to the first part of the 20th century, perhaps even into the 1890s a bit. And um, each of them, I believe, may have been painted by, by, by children. So, so how, do we, how, how might we determine that and why might that be uh, important? These first two, two pieces that we'll look at um, are circa 1900, uh, 1890s to, to 1910. We know some similarities, They're both Santo Domingo, so they have, both have black uh, paint, the black paint being something called spinach weed or bees weed uh, on a Santo Domingo creamy uh, slip, a painted white surface that serves as the easel for, for the pot. Um, it's clear from looking at, at both of these lovely pieces, they're potted pretty well. Potted by someone who certainly knows how to create Santo Domingo pottery and these are in the form of, of, of water jars. This one a little bit smaller, this one a full-size water jar close to it. Um, but then we notice something different as we look at the, each pot individually. While the pot is beautifully formed, the paint is a, a, little, a little rougher. This looks like a, a, a sprouting uh, um, seed pod. Um, indication of again, you know, the the, the often the, the the continuous reverence for and need for water expressed almost in a prayer-like fashion on the pottery designs, and then very unusual um, a picture of of a weaving on the pot, but again not as beautifully painted as it is potted. We'll get to the reason for that in a moment. Very similar here, beautifully made. Pot, but again, the painting uh, even even more primitive, lovely, warm, fun series of birds. But notice the bird's head on each one. Sort of just kind of a blob of black point for a beak and a couple lines, but not much detail. And looking again, like perhaps a different person painted it than may have potted this jar. In both cases, I think what happened was mother paints or grandmother or mother pots makes a beautiful piece of pottery or grandmother does the same. And then the piece of pottery is, is handed to the child to make a beautiful piece of artwork for the family. And that's why that's how the pottery tradition is, is handed on. The children learned uh, in, in that way. Third example, uh, even, even more striking example, again, beautifully formed piece of pottery, maybe a little later than, than these, maybe dating to 1920. Um, and notice then, the design is um, maybe a, not as primitive as, as this one, maybe as a child that was a little bit older, uh, but, a, but a child for sure. Notice the language on it, it says, this is, it's supposed to be bird, but bird is misspelled, this is bird, his nest. So in this particular case, not only was the child given the pot to practice doing a painted design on, a combination of, of a very artistic uh, bird and nest in, in a tree, and then traditional uh, oval forms in a negative space, um, as very traditional at, at Santo Domingo on, on pottery, but then the child was also given an opportunity to practice what's clearly a new language. Santo Domingo people speak Kirisan. English is a second language that the children are struggling to learn. And one of the ways of learning is to practice their, their vocabulary and their language uh, on a piece of pottery. Three wonderful pieces of, of pottery created by mothers or grandmothers and given to children to decorate from the early part of the 20th century at Santo Domingo.